As you see, my Jedi powers are far beyond you. What is up, everybody? Welcome in to episode 29, our Adrian Beltre podcast, a little Texas Ranger shout out. Uh, DCI podcast episode 29, another great day in the hobby. I am Jason, joined as always by big sexy Bradley Crenshaw. Hope everyone is having a great week. Uh, first of all, want to direct everybody to um, like and subscribe to the channel. You don't want to miss out on any of our upcoming episodes, um, weekly podcasts, tons of short content coming out uh, daily here at DCI. We're cranking stuff out uh, content-wise around the office all the time. It's uh, never, a, never a dull moment here at DCI. But um, episode 29, great day in the hobby. Uh, 29. You know what? Adrian Beltre. I, I liked old Adrian when he was at Texas. One of the greatest Texas Rangers of all time. You know, if you watch a lot of his highlights, what's so great about Adrian, he he always had fun 100%. when he was on the field. Like, he was always the joker, you know, messing around. I love those ones where he's messing around with, like, Elvis Andrews, you know, in the dugout. And they tap Grab his it, head or whatever. Head yeah. yeah, that's that's great. I like when they used to um, – <laughs> When those guys, he, so Beltre played third base, and El, Elvis um, no longer with the Rangers either. Neither of them anymore. Beltre retired. Um, they played that left side of the infield, and so whenever somebody would hit that, you know, super high towering fly ball to the left side of the infield, one of those guys, one of the two, would call the other one off. And a lot of times, the the other guy would get as close as they could to make the other guy uncomfortable. Uh, to see if they would drop that fly ball, you know what I mean? Coming down the line, the can of corn pop yeah, fly. And yeah. um, it's fun. It is. It's fun to see guys who compete for a living still enjoy what they do. Yes. I mean, you, you've got to. You've got to have fun with it. Right. If, you, if you're serious about it all the time, I mean, screw that. I don't want to do that. Right. I mean, you got to have, have fun. You got you to cut up. You got to have a good time. You got to enjoy what you do. Um, you know, I always want to create an atmosphere inside of any company that I'm at. Of, of, you know, relaxation, fun, but we still get the job done, you know? 100%. Um, you know, when it, when it comes down to it, you know, the, we make it happen. It, we, the we it mentality, whatever it takes, that's just, you know, that's just the way I like to run things. Same, at the same time, I think, you know, in my experience, being here the last three plus years now, the, um, you know, the community, mm-hmm kind of enjoys that as well and yeah. wants to hang out with the DCI guys, right? It's yeah. always um, it's always fun to when we get to a show, maybe like for vendor setup, um, something like that, when we, you know, we don't we don't necessarily come in quiet usually. We've got all of our gear and our big ass tent and, um, you know, DCI doesn't do anything quietly, I would say. No. Uh, but it's really fun when we go, no. when we go to some of these events and people are always like, hey, hey there you are, there's the big tent, like, yeah. hey, good to see you guys. Um, everybody loves the big D everybody loves the big D that's exactly <laughs> right and uh, that's just something I think I can speak for myself um, hopefully I you know can speak for coworkers as well but if you love what you do you never work a day in your life yeah, absolutely. and it's uh, absolutely it's a pleasure hey we're gonna be getting a new uh, a new podcast set up ain't we we're getting a, whole, a lot of new stuff I yeah. think we're uh, what do we say leveling up again that's right we're, we're, uh, we're gonna be this may be the last time we use this particular uh, room and this setup in here we're gonna be uh we're gonna be moving new the, studio. Uh, the to a new studio and new, right. new new podcast and content creation place so um again outside of our grading facilities just another you know way for us to bring more content to the viewers more um you know better better quality photos and things along those lines so re- really excited about that yeah the dedicated space that you're talking about is going to be super cool. Not only for again, content creation, but we're going to, you know, continue to level up podcast, our whatnot community, which I'm touch on here in a minute is growing like crazy. Mm -hmm. We've got, you know, $1 auctions running four or five times a day, a great place to get, um, where, 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 where's that going on at? on our, our DCI grading whatnot. Um, so all of our live streams, just building this awesome community again, a fun place for people to hang out during the week, whether yeah. they may not be able to get to a card shop while they're at work or on their lunch break, but um, still want to do some shopping or, or just hang out with some. And we got our own marketplace coming too, right? We've got a marketplace to where if we're not live, you can still hop on there. Yeah. That's through ISO. You know what we um, need to get in this new setup is some new damn mics because I'm tired of my beard. <laughs> that gum mic, and I keep saying that. 
lighting. But, we're gonna step it all up. Yeah, the mics, the but sound, we, 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 the. Uh, we definitely need some better lighting on you. That's I for mean, sure. I know. We, we, we definitely we'll turn the lights down over here. We'll turn the lights down on this side. We'll turn them all over. And that's what, that's the uh, the main the, one of our main changes. I think is you know you, a, you know uh, you, you talk about going into a show and people being like, well, there's the DCI guys, you know, and it, it, it's funny because every time I go to a show, people come to me and go. Please tell me you didn't bring Jason. Like, yeah, I left him at home. That's right. They don't. Uh, if I'm a, if I'm a, if I'm at the show, there's not going to be many tens given out. Yeah. So uh, people know they got to earn it if I'm there. So uh, I got to make make them earn it. Uh, people want to people want to make money. So yeah. you know when uh, when I'm there, it's it's going to be tough. Uh, I hear you. So what we got today, man? Man, we've got an awesome uh, awesome set of um, topics today from the cool. the hobby and the sports uh, world in general. Real quick though, um, I do want to touch on our whatnot. Um, our live streams, that marketplace that's coming yep. as well. Something I've really um, been focused on this past couple of weeks, building that community. Um, again, we run $1 auctions. We offer $5 RCRs. It's a really fun place to hang out. We um, ship those orders out the next day. So again, really convenient access, quick access to modern new cards at a great price. We should just um, change it and make it donations at DCI. Great that's right exactly now, right. Because that's pretty much what we do. We give stuff away. We are. There. That's exactly yeah. right. And if and it, But you know what? It's all about providing the value that's back right. to it's the hobby. All about value. And as long as we can make it work on our end, we're going to continue 100%. to do that. You know, I, I just saw the other day we were talking about uh, being greedy in this hobby. You know, take, take for instance, the, the controversial, you know, message going around about the, the Aaron Judge ball. Yep. You know, and, sure. and that he got offers of $3 million and turned them down because he wanted to send it to auction. And turns around and gets a 1.5. Greed to get you every time. Yep. And so – you just got to be able to add value. We talk about it too. You make money on something, allow somebody else to make money on it and keep moving it and passing it, you know, forward. So we, we were just having <clears> this <throat> discussion. It's almost impossible to maximize every dollar on yeah. every transaction in yep. this hobby. Um, and doing that will cost you business over mm -hmm. the long run for the people that you push away in those yep. relationships. hundred um, percent. So that's something that uh, we've really focused on is that whatnot channel. Uh, our, 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 Blech. our ISO marketplace as well for those static auctions kind of running ISO. stuff. What's ISO. That, what's that stand for? In search of. In search of. <laughs> you almost got me there. I was like, I don't, shoot, I don't know. In search of. Super cool company. Um, really, really cool platform yeah. that's going to allow us to really level up our online What are we going to be in search of? Anything you want, man. If you want it, we're going to sell it. That's that's what we do here at nice. DCI. Nice. So we'll be saying selling like event worn autographed Jason Dardick shirts. That's right from the show. So DCI. like maybe maybe from the next Dallas show, I'll sign we'll, him up. He'll sign up a couple of those, and we'll auction those dudes I'll wear off. The same that's, shirt. All that was four event days. worn, where all he gave days. out ten tens, which is a a, a record. A record. A it's a record. It is a new record. <laughs> He was in a, gr think, a great mood all weekend. A new record. As a matter of fact, there's actually some. I think we're going to talk about some of the the records and and things that you know have happened over the, this last week, right? That is. That's a good lead into our uh, first topic. Yeah. Um, I know that you are a diehard soccer fan, so I'm going to let you um, <laughs> <laughs> talk about our <laughs> our World Cup final football. Football. That's exactly right. Um, no, we're back to American football now. World Cup's uh, over. Yeah. Uh, football is football now, <laughs> that, and uh, that is exactly right. But I do want to talk about the historic, arguably the best, you know, a lot of people saying the best World Cup final of all time. It was incredible. Unbelievable. And I don't even know anything at all about soccer. but Unbelievable. And that's that kind of that high level of competition um, at, the, at the highest level yep. on the biggest stage. It doesn't get any better than that. Two of the best. Uh, Leo Messi, obviously, the greatest of all time. Um, taking home the, the championship for Argentina. Yeah, it was Just awesome. storybook ending for them and for him, um, an unbelievable career. And then to do it against kind of the the next up-and-coming, um, you know, yep. Kylian Mbappe for France, um, who had a crazy game in his own right. Oh, it, it, was, um, it was, yeah. I mean, it. I got up and went upstairs and went in the movie room. My wife goes, well, what are you doing? I said, I'm watching soccer. That's she right. Said, You're doing what? Yeah. Because I just don't, I don't watch soccer. But I knew that I was watching Tom it's Brady history. against Patrick Mahomes. I understood that. That's a great because, way to put it. I mean, Messi is the goat yep. going against the baby goat, That's basically exactly right. in, in Mbappe. And to watch those, 
I don't understand the rules. I, I I did, you know, I come back downstairs and I told her, I said, Hey, you know what? I just realized what a, what a, what a tackle was, how you tackle somebody yep. in, in soccer. And, you know, just by watching the just game, and I imagine game. if I watched enough of it, I could figure that stuff out. But I mean, it just, what interests me was the, the two of them playing each other. And then when I got to watching them and the way they move with oh. their feet and their ball and the way they can change directions and, it, it was just I was um, just amazed it, at watching it, and it just kept me. And then as they would get closer, I knew they were going down for a score, and they were moving the ball around. And I mean, it got me excited. It, I, and it, it they is. make the kick, and well, and you yeah. hear all the time soccer. It's like the they call it the beautiful game, right? And it's it's that build up to the scoring, right? Like yes. it takes them so much longer <laughs> to build that play up, and then it goes in, right? And they're only using their feet. It's inc- it, it's crazy. It looks like you know you and I throwing a ball with our hands. Yep. Um, on foot, you know, dead sprint. They pull a ball down out of the air with their foot, and it just drops, and they they keep running. With it's amazing what those guys can do. And I'm right there with you. I don't watch a whole lot of soccer, but I can yeah. appreciate um, two of the goats, you know, going at it at the highest level. And again, that would be it would be like Tom Brady and Patrick Mahomes competing for a gold medal. You yeah. know what I mean in the Olympics yep. or something like that. It was so, um, so awesome to watch, and then to see those videos of of everybody in the streets in Argentina was just like talk about it. What it means? Wow. Yeah, it's a whole it's a whole. Nother I mean level. that that sets it sets the tone for what that sport means to those countries. It's on. It's. I mean, there's nothing like it. There, there's not a sport in the United States that we would fill the streets for like that. Not. Th- Four million people is what they estimated in the streets of Argentina. Really crazy. They, they couldn't even do a parade. That, yeah, they, they had to pull the team off of the I think uh, they done it by helicopter. Route. Crazy. <laughs> yeah, that is um, – yeah, that was – I mean, that the whole World Cup is, is a really interesting event. I think it's really cool, obviously, and the corruption in FIFA and all that is um, is interesting as well. And kind of I'm, – I'm looking forward to the next World Cup being in the U.S., with Dallas and Houston as a couple of the host AT&T cities. AT&T Stadium's getting one. I would love, and, and that's, you know, we talked about that last week, those renovations they're going to do um, to Jerry's, you know, Jerry's AT&T Stadium um, oh, for that World Cup. We have the Soccer Hall of Fame in our parking lot out there. Literally, in our parking lot. Have you ever been there? I have not even been in there. It's awesome. It's you've awesome. If you're in the Dallas area and you've got time, take a couple hours, go to the Soccer Hall of Fame. It's the, um, I think it's the MLS Hall of Fame. So, you know, Major League Soccer. Um, it's right here in Frisco, five minutes from our office. It is awesome. They've got tons of, like, video, uh, VR, like, interactive. Mm-hmm. You can, like, save penalty kicks and do um, – Was Pele in the MLS? I don't – now, Pele was not – I don't think he ever spent time in the MLS. Okay. But uh, See, that's our only, about the only other name I know when it comes to soccer. But maybe Landon Donovan. You know I, Landon I Donovan? Know, I yeah, actually he, do know that they've one. Got and, whole, and they've got a whole shrine of Landon Donovan <laughs> uh, stuff. David Beckham. That's da- another one. David Beckham? Yeah. He, he's Be- because there, there the was this big thing on bend it like Beckham. That's exactly right. And I right. didn't understand exactly what that meant. Well, now I do because the way they kick those soccer balls, when they kick from that corner and they <laughs> curve that ball in, it's just like – Whoa! How the hell? Yeah, yeah. How did he do that? And the goalie just stands there like, "All right, well." Yeah. And those <laughs> pe- those yeah. penalty kicks. It's always funny to watch those. And, and and as I watched them, I like to watch Messi do his. He would go up. He would do a little hesitation. Yep. And make him think he was going to the right, and then just just kind of roll it, it in. Yeah, he done that a couple of times. There has to be no better feeling in sports than a goalkeeper saving a penalty shot. You yeah, have to. They, it, they have to choose right or left, right feels, off the bat. It feels like it's so weighted in the in the advantage of the shooter. A hundred. It's only twelve yards out. It's crazy. It feels like it's an automatic, and yet the guy missed the the goal for uh, France. And you know you see it all the time. Guys, they'll shoot it over the over the crossbar. Twelve yards out, thirty six feet, and that ball has to be moving yeah. at speeds of close to a hundred miles an hour. Right. And I mean to make that save, and it's that is clutch um, pressure situation. That that's got to be an awesome feeling. Yeah. Um, really cool in there. Um, it's a couple other records um, that were broken. I guess Messi. Uh, Entering the record books as the, um, the with the golden boot and the uh, Argentinian World Cup victory, um, we'll move over to the other football though. The uh, the biggest collapse in NFL history 
happened uh, <laughs> over the weekend. Um, and and no, I'm own, not talking about the Cowboys. Because <laughs> I thought about our very own Grayson when I was watching that, that game. That's exactly right. Uh, I actually wasn't even paying attention when it was 33 to nothing because I said, this is a boring game. It's over. I, I, okay, so first of all, I'm going to be honest. I didn't even realize there was an NFL game on Saturday this past weekend. <laughs> and so I, I turned the TV on. I know on. you didn't because you texted me about your fantasy football. I know, up. and I was like, oh, man, like I totally spaced on that. And so I turned on the TV, and it was 33-0. And I was like, oh, this is a replay or something like that. It's Saturday. I was like, wait a second, this is live. They're down 33 nothing. What the hell is happening to the Vikings? Um, and I don't think the Vikings are great. By the way, I think their record is a little bit uh, better than than their roster, but um, certainly did not expect them to go down thirty three nothing to the Colts. Um, yeah, there was a bunch of controversial calls too in that game that makes me believe that there's and it's happened a lot in the NFL recently and even in NBA, like uh, Luca getting thrown out the other night and things along. These these refs have got to be having that they've got some major bet lines going at Vegas because there is absolutely no way that the swings should happen the way that they do. The refs can they they can they, 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 can. they can control the outcome of those games just by a couple of calls. And I'm not saying that that's the way with every game. Right. But also, I don't know if you saw the video a couple of weeks ago of the, the ref that walked out on the field and forgot to turn his mic off. And he looked at the other ref and he says, all right, this is the way we're going to call this. And then he realized he still had his mic on oh. and cut his mic off. So stuff like that makes me believe that a lot of that is, is rigged to what, the way they want it to go. So, But, yeah, 33 points and to crumble like that, oh. I was like, no. Nah. There, there's no way. With 10 minutes left, I think it was – I think they were down 21 with like 10 minutes left You're or something You're talking like about a group of professionals. Right. Okay? Professionals. Now, let me put that in perspective. When you go to high school and you have a high school football players, you have one, maybe two superstars on the team. Right? Right. You're drafted into college. You get to college. Now, all of the good players from high school are now on that college team. Okay? So now you've, you've taken all the All-Americans yep. and you've put them on a college team. Okay? That's the reason, you know, that, that it's just a level up. Right. Now, only 1%, I think that's about the statistics of that, give or take, 1% of those people – Make it to the NFL. So now you have the elite of the elite. Yep. No way in hell that, ever that a professional of that level on both sides, I don't care how terrible some of these NFL teams are and their organizations, no way does do you lose a 33-point lead <laughs> In a half, not in a game, right? In, not in a three quarters. In a quarter, in, almost. In, yeah, yes, a quarter in, and some in, change. Yes, in a quarter and in in, in three quarters, whatever right. it was. Right. No way. There's no way you lose that unless there's something. It else. was already pre-planned because we got some Pete Roses on the sideline. <laughs> That's right. In the refs, I'm talking about something's got to be something fishy or something. Yeah. Yes. You tell me how Vegas can line that stuff out. Grayson's shaking his head. He's like, no way, man. The Vikings are real deal. I mean, the Vikings t- are the real t- deal. T- tell me how Vegas, can pick, how Vegas can pick those numbers so close. <laughs> well, if the, if the refs are – if they got the refs in their back pocket. It certainly helps. I mean, yeah. It's like, it's like if a criminal's got a judge in his back pocket, he ain't going to jail. That's right. So, I know crushing, crushing loss um, if you're a Colts fan. Tough one there. Yeah, because I like Jeff Saturday. I do too. And, and he's I really, a fun, I really yeah. hope he gets that full time job. And that's why I'm not against the Vikings, but I am for Jeff Saturday just because right. I like Jeff Saturday. Right. And I yeah. was really hoping that they would pull that win out. But I mean, on the same note, I, a Viking. I love Justin Jefferson. Man, he's he's so my good. LSU boy. He is. He is awesome. 
I think Kirk Cousins is trash. <laughs> I when, it comes to, when it comes to that, he is absolute <laughs> trash. Yeah. But Justin Jefferson well, is by far the best receiver in the NFL. In the NFL, he right is now. Un- he is unbelievable. I 100 percent agree with that. Um, talk about another tough loss, local team here, and um, kind of on the uh, on the back of Dak Prescott, who gets a lot of the Kirk Cousins comparisons. Um, two guys that are often compared to one another. Um, both, um, I guess, Kirk got the win, but Dak threw that game game um, losing interception. Uh, to the Jaguars in overtime, uh, Cowboys go down. I know that was a, that was a tough one there. But how about did you see the end of the Oakland Raiders Patriots game? Um, with yeah, I the, was sick. What are they doing? That's another I, one where you I make have, it to the NFL, you have to have some kind of awareness. I have Josh Jacobs on my fantasy oh. team, oh, and no. he had ninety five rushing yards or ninety three rushing yards, and I was like, "Good, we're going to overtime. I'll get my hundred and get my bonus." Yep. And I, I was sitting there watching that game, and I was like, are you freaking kidding me? What uh, are you doing? And how, how about that tackle by Mac Jones at the end, just getting <sighs> planted by the uh, – Poor dude. Yeah, that, that was a tough screenshot. He's going to have to live that one down for a while. Yeah. All right, speaking of the NFL, those were our bad losses. Let's talk about your NFL top three teams right now. Give me your top three teams in today's NFL. <clears throat> top three teams in today's NFL. Well, I mean – Obviously, in the AFC, uh, I mean, I'm going to go uh, – it's the Buffalo Bills, the Kansas City Chiefs. Mm-hmm. I mean, I still think that – I still think those two teams are the, the teams to beat. Teams to beat. Um, I Holmes had Buffalo pick to win the Super Bowl this year. The only problem that I have with that at the present moment, even though they beat the Chiefs in regular season, it's hard to beat somebody two, year, two, two, two times, times in the same year. Yep. Uh, and so that, and they're not playing their best football. They're defensively, they they've lost so many defensive players. I think that uh, they've lost Von Miller. He's out for the year now. Yep. And so those types of things, I don't know whether or not they're. You got to have a defense to be able to, or you got to be able to put up a crap ton of points. And I don't think they can. I think Josh Allen's trying to compensate for the lack of defense I try and, yeah. and he does not throw the ball when he is down inside the 20 yard line in the red zone what is it? he always wants to run and that's because I think his interception rates are higher in, in the, the red, red zone than any other time so I think he's a little little skeptical on making that pass so but Kansas City uh Buffalo and then my team, my other team that I had to th- throw in that mix, I'll go NFC, and I'm going to go the San Francisco 49ers. I like that. Yeah, I like that. Unfortunately, I would have had the Eagles up there until the news that Jalen Hurts <clears throat> broke his collarbone. Um, really bummer. A big, huge bummer for the Eagles there. Bummer for really football fans as Jalen Hurts was just having a great year. Uh, he seems like a really likable guy as well, just a comp- true competitor. Um, so – I think the Eagles will make a run, but I don't know if they necessarily have enough now with Gardner Minshew at the helm um, to to make that that final push uh, in the playoffs. But it'll be interesting to see it. I'm excited for NFL uh, NFL they kind of wrapping up the end of the year. Always fun. Um, I've never been I've never been on the Eagles bandwagon anyway. I just I, I don't I they don't do a lot I've for me. I've never had them like, predicted to to win. I've never thought they were going to make it there. Uh, I didn't. Like, what helps is how bad their division is. Yes, that that was the that was really the selling point of the Eagles going into this year, right? Because people were kind of down on the Cowboys. They'd lost some players on D and weren't really sure going into Price as a Jalen Hurts too was already had basically Super Bowl winning baked into the numbers. That's right. The 100, 144,000 for the Black Prism finite, and now um, that he's out, literally two days prior, what? does that do for all of the Jalen Hurts investors? Yeah, that one that hurts. Uh no pun intended. Yeah, I know. That's uh that one's tough. Yeah. All right, I want to wrap up uh this episode with another quick top 3. We had our top 3 our power rankings uh for the NFL. Okay. But as we head into the Christmas holiday, uh Christmas this Sunday, I want to get your top 3 favorite Christmas movies. Your top three favorite Christmas movies as we head in to the holiday season. What are you looking forward to? Maybe spending some time 
with family watching on your uh, on the big screen. I don't watch a lot of. You don't want to movie. come on, man. To be honest with you, come on, man. I'm not a, I'm not a sit around with a hot cup of cocoa and. You look and like dude, a bad Santa kind of guy. It, this that's just not. That's, <laughs> I don't. I, I'll no. I guess if I had to throw one in there because they always watch it at my house would be Elf. I was going to say, everybody loves uh, Elf. You got to know Elf. Yes, Elf. Elf's a classic. And I mean, of course, your classics of Home Alone. Yep. But I think if I'm going to throw in another one, it's going to be like, you know, Rambo First Blood. That's exactly you know? one of my so, all-time <laughs> favorite movies. That's that's a good Christmas that's movie an, for That's me. an all-time you great know, movie. I want to I see somebody, you know, they some drew action. Blood, some, sir, some, not yeah, me. That's right. Some, some killing or something. That's right. How do you stand, where do you stand on Die Hard being a Christmas movie? I like some Die Hard, too. Die Die Hard's yeah, a Christmas yeah, movie. It's All a right. Christmas movie. Yeah. We'll throw that yeah. one up there. You know, I'll, I'll binge watch the Rockies, you know, all the yep. way through. That's a Christmas movie for me if I'm going to watch some television. But to be honest with you, I really I won't even do that. I spend a lot of times during the during the holidays just, you know, reading and studying and prepping and getting ready. And yeah, that way I'm ready to hit the ground running for the for the new year. So it's awesome. Well, yeah. it's going to be a great holiday. I hope, um, hope everybody has a wonderful holiday. So you asked season. me. I got a question for yep. you. Yep. You asked me what my three contenders were. Uh -huh. What are your three pretenders? That's a great question. NFL, three pretenders. I'm going to catch some flack for saying this. Right off the top, Dallas Cowboys. How about them Cowboys? How about them Cowboys? Yeah, I just, um, I just don't see it. They don't have enough. Uh, so if you go back and check a couple episodes ago, I, I called what's going to happen. And, here, and I'm going to say it again. The first round bounce. The Cowboys lose in the first round. Yep. They fire Mike McCarthy. Next, they hire Sean Payton, and then they'll make a content. They'll be a contender. I'm gonna, yeah, I, I like Sean Payton, so I'd be cool with that. Um, I'm gonna piss off everybody. I'm gonna say the Vikings, as uh, DCI Grayson uh, stares at me. I don't believe the Vikings. I, I don't think I'm the right Vikings. There with you. I, that's man, two I can agree with. They've you got uh, an inflated record, in my opinion. The Vikings, the Cowboys. Um, Kirk Cousins, uh, f that up for him. Yeah, um, I'm not. I'm not. The wild card standings are kind of like there's a lot of parity. You know what I mean? Like the top the top couple teams are the the, the front runners. I think are again the Chiefs, the Bills. Um, I agree with the 49ers being a, a legit contender. I think their defense is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, I'm not a hundred percent convinced by the Ravens. Um, I like Maybe. Lamar, and I like that um, it's a contract year, and he's got you know he wants to go and get all the money. Uh, power to him. But yeah, those would be my top three: the Ravens. Um, Cowboys and the Vikings. So give me your Super Bowl prediction right now. Super Bowl prediction right now, I am going with the Chiefs and the 49ers. A repeat of when Patrick Mahomes beat them a few years ago. And I give it to – I think the Chiefs win. And you think the Chiefs take and it? I, and, and in July, I bet that the Buffalo Bills would win. Um, but I think Mahomes has shown me enough these last couple weeks. Um, and as the Chiefs – defense kind of continues to get healthy um i think that they have leapfrogged in my opinion the buffalo bills and josh allen um and, and a lot of that has to do again with experience like if i want them going head to head give me patrick every time well they scared the shit out of me this weekend against oh, Houston. that was ridiculous and houston is one of those teams where their record's terrible and that yet they play up to the level of whoever they're playing. They have like they, nothing to lose. They have, it, that's exactly right. They and have nothing to lose. And that's why a yep. lot of teams, if they will play to win and not play to lose, they would win more games. But a lot of teams play not to lose. Or to lose. hold the lead, like the Colts. Like, the one thing that drives the Vikings me insane came back. is when a team gets a three-point lead or a six-point lead or a ten-point lead, and then all they want to do is run the ball. Yeah, just run the clock out. It's just, it's just run the ball. It's it, you're you're playing not to lose. Right. Play to win. Play to win. Definitely. Play to win. You need me to come coach, I will. That's exactly right. <laughs> Guys, I hope everyone has a very Merry Christmas. That does it for episode 29 of the DCI podcast. Make sure you guys are liking and subscribing to the channel. Don't want to miss out on any of our content. Also, come and check out our WhatNot channel. We've got $1 auctions, a great community to buy and sell cards. Shipping that stuff out daily to you guys as well. Great access um, to the new products. It's a great place to hang out. A lot of fun. Um, we will see you guys next week. And as always, I am Jason, joined by Big Sexy Bradley Crenshaw. See you all next week. See you.